hello, hello, hello. Yes, I am on your screen with a brand new baby that you're gonna be seeing every week. It's simple, it's tagged in your vicinity with Jedi. I am your host. My name is Olua Tosin Jedi Ayo. Of course, they call me the welfare comedian. <laughs> well, you can see I am, even though I'm losing weight. And on this particular show, all I do is I travel around the world. I go and visit people who are your celebrities, your personalities, your special ones. And I have an interactive moment with them. Sometimes just to find out how do they feel? How are they able to conquer situations? How are they able to live through challenges and you know, share some of their success stories with you? And on this particular episode, we traveled. Yeah, my director, myself, our team, we traveled all the way to Dallas, Texas, United States of America. And I was honored to go and see one of my guests in her own vicinity. <laughs> yes, I let a little cat out of the bag, I said her. You know definitely is a lady that I'm going to be talking to. You want to know who? Watch this and we'll be right back. <laughs> My guest tonight. Now, let me tell you first of all, this is 11.46 p.m. This is just to show you that my guest tonight loves me like crazy. Because moving from one movie set to another, busy schedule, still created that time. Trust me, I am loved. And it's touching my soul. I am so loved. It's an honor to have this beautiful, delectable, humble, amazing, brilliant, sensational, loving, wonderful lady. Multiple award winning. Ha! Ah, one of the one of the icons of Nollywood in Nigeria, who's gone international, ladies and gentlemen. My dear sister, dear friend, my love, the one and only Stella, the masses. <laughs> ah! Oh God! Oh, leave me! Oh, I am jump. <laughs> I am hammer. Like you don't understand what this is. It's a big deal to have one of the one of the major faces we all grew up looking at on the screen be here with me on my show. It's not beans. <laughs> it's not fried rice. It's not fried rice. Oh my God, it's not puff puffs. <laughs> At all. It's a big honor. Thank you, bro. Thank you so much. I have a confession. Yes. I don't know how you're going to take it. Okay. I remember vividly several years ago, I saw a movie. And I saw this lady. And my heart skipped a bit. to <laughs> do. <laughs> This? <laughs> Your voice changed. I was already in crush. <laughs> Not that I had crush for her. I was in crush. And my friend who happened to be a part of that project just told me, yeah, 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 her name is Stella. She's a very lovely lady, wonderful actress. I said, man, she's fine. And the next thing he says, oh, she's married. I said, oh, <laughs> oh. I was taken, taken. <laughs> Do you know, for so long, I had to consciously, in my head, <laughs> in my head, keep re repeating it so that I can help my in crush come out of the crush. <laughs> so she's married, she's married, she's married. Then we met, and we, we, keep, we keep running into each other at different shows. Yes. She, she, she was part of a band mm -hmm. led by the one and only memorable, God bless his soul, continue to rest well, Jaye Abodere, who happened to be her husband mm -hmm. then, and f amazing guy. Yeah. <laughs> if you had met him, Very. you will understand. He's an amazing <laughs> guy. Yeah. He's a younger brother to Auntie Wumi as well, Wumi Obe, as in one of the two, yes. Tune Wumi Obe. Like, amazing guy. So, I mean, I, we run into each other, we have fun, we built a relationship. Yeah. So it was good for me that we could build the friendship. <laughs> Because I had to cautiously oh kill the in crush so that I can come out of the crush. Thank you. And I cannot understand how God did it that we've built such an yeah. amazing friendship yeah. that people can't understand. Mm -hmm. She goes through a lot. I know when I reach out to her, sis, I got you. Yeah. No All shaking. Time. All the time. No shaking. I've been talking too much. I feel so bad. No. Let's just hear her say hello. <laughs> 
Hello. Don't take it from there. <laughs> Hello. So I've done my true confession. Okay. There's no more crutch. No, no, no. You're there's my no brother. more crutch. There's just, <laughs> there's just feeling. There's no more crutch. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Um, I think it comes from the kind of heart that you have, the purity of your heart, not just for me, but for people around you. And it shows. When people meet you, it just comes through. It's hard not to love you. It's hard not to appreciate you. And you're one of those people who have been there throughout, even when you don't realize it. But every time I've hit rock bottom in my life and I've looked around for people who will stand with me and for me, Daddy's always there, always there. You're always one of the first to call and say, hey, sis, I don't know what's happening, but I got you. I'm like, that's all I want to hear. It's the crutch. <laughs> it's the ink crutch that is working. Oh. God already helped me cover the ink crutch of friendship oh. because you're married. So yes. the activity I should be doing in crutch, God brought it in friendship. Yes, yes. But it yes. must have been an amazing journey. Yeah. People celebrate the face, they celebrate the name, they celebrate the brand. There's a whole lot you're doing. There are people you're mentoring. The people you reach out to on Instagram. It must have been a journey. Mm. What was it like when you had the first experience or opportunity to feature in a movie? Mm. That was by accident. I didn't think that movie would be the thing that people would know me for. I thought it would be music. Oh. I was a studio rat in Clink Studio Surulere. Hey! Remember? Those of you who don't know who Clink, <laughs> where Clink Studio is in Surulere. Yeah. Look, that was one of the premier studios yes. of international standard then. Yeah. That all the artists, actors and actresses, uh, voiceover artists as well, producers go to. Yeah. That you worked in Clink Studios then. Yeah. Well, That's why she said she was a studio rat. Yes. But you could work in Clink Studio? It's not everywhere now that people are going to a hotel, carry microphone, carry laptop, mm -hmm. and uh, audio channel, this mm -hmm. thing that you have, do music. <laughs> no, that time you book sessions. sessions yes. You book Eight sessions. hour sessions. Yes. And I was one of those who came with your session. I was a backup singer. Then I would do jingles, radio jingles, and adverts, and all of that. And Can you remember any of the adverts? Um, close up to brush, close up to brush, reaches further to clean better. That was me. <laughs> when one I did Omo, Super Blue Omo. No, I didn't oh, do okay. that one. Sorry, it sounded I like. <laughs> so you know, that's where I started from, and when I was doing that, I got introduced to a place called Jazzville. Yeah. Yaba. Yeah. Uncle where, Tunde. Uncle Tunde. Yes, and he just had this nice hangout that was very cozy where different bands would come and perform. Yeah. And then I would sing for different bands. So I thought that was my life. Music was going to be my life. And then one day, a friend of mine came to my house on a weekend. I hadn't even showered. I was wearing bathroom slippers. And she was like, I'm going to Kejau for an audition. Please come with me. I'm like, ah, me, I'm cuckoo jobless. Let's go. Right now, I'm not doing any studio work. <laughs> Let's go. So I went with her, sat outside, and there were so many ladies there. They told me, oh, they're looking for somebody to play one particular role. And all the girls were standing under the sun. I said, God forbid me, this kind of sofa. So they were all going in and coming out. And then one guy comes out, he sees me, and he says to me, have you gone for audition? I said, I didn't come. Yeah, I oh, you can he said, ah, go inside, I like your face, I like the way you sound, go inside, I, I, let me take you to the director. I was busy laughing. I said, you want to disgrace me. I entered there, they gave me a script. I didn't know what I was doing. I grabbed the script, I was reading my lines, I was laughing. I said, let me go home, I beg. Three weeks later, they came to call me in the studio where I was singing. They said, somebody's here to see you. I came outside and lo and behold, the director, the guy, the producer, they were there like, they said, you got the job. I said, which job? The one you were joking with. I didn't plan it, Jedi. You got the role. I said, which role? The road everybody say you got the road. I want to pay you ten thousand. They were begging me to collect ten thousand. Meanwhile, my salary I think was seven hundred naira per month, and they wanted to pay me ten k for a three day job. Seven hundred naira, naira mm -hmm. a month. Yes, this was in nineteen ninety four. Ten thousand naira. Yeah. You people will understand. They will understand. <laughs> Those were the days where. There were shows that I was paid 1K. Yep. There were shows I was paid 5K. Mm -hmm. I still remember discussing with one of my friends, uh, Holy Malam, then. We were discussing on an improvement on our brand. This was in December. And we said, he even said, 
by January, I'll start charging 15,000 naira so. for events. Yeah. I can understand and relate what you're saying. Mm -hmm. 10,000 for a three day job? Yep. That was a big deal. I'm serious. End of 94 stroke, 1995. That was a. <laughs> I said, really? This sweet? Give me. I did it. After that, they put me on a poster. Someone else called me again for a job, paid me 12K or something. I said, ah, studio. Where are you? Hold a minute. <laughs> Don't worry, I will pay you 700. I think I'm, I'm liking this. I will one. pay you the 700. That's it. <laughs> and that's how I just moved. I just left studio singing and all of that, and I just went into. Were there, the were there sets that. I mean, these are, these are kind of questions I love asking yeah. my friends in the movie industry. <laughs> were there sets that the people around you were just annoying? It could be the crew, it could be the director, it could be the co-star in the movie. Were there just people who were so annoying that you literally wanted to stand up, not just walk away, and slap them? Mm. The only thing I didn't do was slap. But stand up, I did. Walk away, I did. Drive away, I did. Return their money, I did. I did all of that because sometimes people can be so insensitive because acting is not your everyday paper and barrel yeah. type thing. This is you becoming someone else. And it, they don't understand that a part of acting can actually be spiritual, not just psychological. Oh. Yeah, you have to be careful because when you're becoming someone else, it comes with a lot. If you're em embracing someone else's personality, someone else's life, you're becoming another person. So they don't see Stella, they see someone else. That comes with a lot of spiritual things. That's why I pray a lot before I do. So when people come and don't understand what you're going through and they just treat you anyhow or they disturb you or they're demanding for unnecessary things you're like i don't think you understand what i'm doing here what i'm putting into this you're making a mockery of me putting my all because when we, yeah. say we put our all it's not just the time no it's not the energy my all i'm giving it everything that character has to have a spirit has to have a life has to have a personality has to have character you have to build it and just be someone else it's not easy it's not you go from one set to the other so imagine today you're family tomorrow you're today next tomorrow you're charles like you are becoming other people in fact it it borders on your mental state as well that's why somebody was asking, have we ever sat down to discuss the mental state of actors? Do we as actors go to talk to therapists? Because switching is like having multiple personality disorder yeah. in different locations. Yeah, That's yeah. what it is. So when you do this, do this, do this, and that people don't understand what you're putting into it. And they think, oh, after all, you've been paid. Do this and let's go. I'm like, you know, t carry your money. If you think it's about this, take it. <laughs> it it's, it's, it's a whole lot because I know... A lot of people who watch, who are watching right now, I mean, who look up to you, see you as a star, they love and adore you. Like I say in most of my episodes that people just see the glory. Yeah. But they don't know the story. No. <laughs> Especially when there are wrong news oh. out there. <laughs> yeah. It takes... A lot. A lot. Because right now you're trying to balance how can people, how can people see me truly for who I am and know that what they read out there or what has been said out there is a lie. Yeah. How? Because why, why I want to ask this question is a lot of you who look up to her, say, I just want to be an actress. I just want to be like Stella. I mean, it's okay. But are you really ready, ready for it? <laughs> because if your skin is not tough enough, you can easily fall. Yeah. A friend once told me, you, when you're dealing with people, you need to learn how to respond, mm. then react. Yeah. How were you able to manage? Stella, you're my sister. I know you now. <laughs> You've suffered a lot of blows from media. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they don't blow you. They don't blow me tired. They don't slap. My face don't they swell. Don't, oh, God. <laughs> My face don't big. You don't swell. But how do you still come out as the beauty, the happy, the delectable, the focused, the visionary Stella? Because of people like you who know me, who know the real me, the essence of who I am as a person. 
because of family, because of friends who look up to me and say, Stella, if you can go through this myself, I feel Chester, I feel Duan. Because sometimes you are even doubting yourself when it's thrown at you from all corners. And in this age where people swallow and chew what they see online without verification, you're just worried that every person that sees you has an impression of who you are. Yeah. But the core of who you are should come from somewhere and should, you should be happy and satisfied when you have people who understand that. If you are satisfied with the few, then you're a strong person. Because you can't, you can't have everybody like you. And that's the problem that we have today, our need for validation. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. The need for mm. <laughs> Hey, hey, you did not hear that. <laughs> Let me help you. The problem we have today is the hunger and the need for validation. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Like, you, are, you want to hear people validate to say, yeah. you're okay. Mm -hmm. Pass mark. Yeah. Whereas you don't really need, need it. So the people who matter the most are those who are, you, you have allowed into your space to get to know the real you. I used to be very angry when people would say all kinds of things, but then I reminded myself that I haven't given people the opportunity to know the private Stella, the, the real Stella. They only see me on TV and they read about me. But those who know me, who have come into my space, if I'm satisfied with the Stella that they know, then I'm good. That matters to me more than the crowd. Because where I'm going, where God is taking me, I'm, I don't need the crowd. I need the people who I know will stand for me, who I will stand for, who will support me. Those are the people that I need to help me climb. And when I rise, the crowd will look up at me. Because it's the same crowd. It's the same crowd that will still look up and say, ah, I love her, not them. But they're not the ones that will lead me and support me and say, hold my hand. The ones that will say, I got you. They are the ones that matter to me. Does Jedi know who I am? Yes, he does. I'm good. Do my kids know who I am? Yes, they do. I'm good. My friends, do they know who I am? Yes, because when I'm in those moments, who do I call? Not the crowd. Yeah. Not the people who comment on yeah. social media. Yeah. The people I call when they have my back, I will rise. Yeah. Were, there, were there moments at such times like that where between you, your heart and God, you are angry with God. Eh? Like, yes. God, yes. why now? Why? <laughs> why would you allow this thing to talk? Why? Oh, all the time. It's, it's like, I have a special place where I go and fight God. <laughs> In my closet. I shut because there's a place for prayer, but when I want to fight and get angry and I don't want the rest of the house to hear, I go into my closet, I shout. I am very angry. I blur it all out so that I don't take it out on anybody else. Because I don't think any other human being can understand that deep part of your heart where you're like, everything is dark and you just want to vent and say all the vile things. And I do. I say it because it's only him that I know can take it. Mm. I never see any human being that can take the worst of me. So when I take it out and I shout and I do what I want to do and I'm tired when I'm worn out, I say, okay, I'm sorry, but you know why? I'm human. You cannot allow this to be happening to me. What have I done? Am I the worst person on earth? And Jedi, the thing that he tells me is enough to make me just break my door. And he says, if not you, who? Oh. Who do you wish it on? If not you, who? If you oh, couldn't wait. take it, will I That would be an unusual response. Yes. Though. That's when I know it's him. If it was me, I know what I would tell myself. But when I know it's God, is when he says, if not you, who do you want me to pass it to? No, tell me your enemy or your friend. Who? Tell me. Give Which me a name. Which means he is in the know. Yes. Because, Jedi, nothing can happen to you and I without his knowledge. And if he allows it, it's for a reason. Did you hear that? Oh, you see, right now, we're going to take that pause. <laughs> we're going on a short break, and we'll be right back, okay? Like this team, <laughs> even me, I have to bear it. <laughs> he is in the know. If it's not you, then who? Yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hi. Hey, guys, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever heard of this online show called in your vicinity with Jedi. You have or you haven't? Don't waste my time, my friend. It is my favorite online TV show. 
in your vicinity. Do you know which vicinity? Our vicinity. I've been on the show, Joseph, name it. All the celebrities you can find in one place. Where do you want to see that type of thing? Only with my crazy friend and brother, Jedi. So hurry now. Stop pressing. Just go to this online TV show and watch in your vicinity with my brother, Jedi. See you there. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. It's still your favorite online TV show in your vicinity with Jedi. And in this vicinity, I'm with the one and only delectable, beautiful, glamorous, charming, <laughs> amazing, uh, sumptuous, loving, epitolytic, oh pampalicious, <laughs> people kutwetted, <laughs> Stella Damasus. And you. I'm happy Thank we could you. come back because my body was scratching me yeah. to be back on the show. <laughs> she said something just before we went to the break. And if you're just joining us, I mean, this is the beauty, the star. Um, she said, if it's not you, then who? Yeah. Which is the message she gets from God when she's locked in the closet. Now, I know there are a lot of you who are now saying, hmm, closet, closet. <laughs> if you're in a one bedroom, <laughs> I face me, I face you. God understands. You don't need to shout. Your landlord will pursue you out there because you're not the only one in the building. But go and look for that closet. The closet doesn't mean it has to be a literal closet. Yeah. But you need that, that place you can be between you and God. Yeah. It's just important. If God could see you through yeah. that moment, are you saying it's just once you've gone to shout or you keep going every time? Hmm. So this is how it is. As a human being, you go through something, you're shouting. He doesn't respond all the time. It's not left for you to decide if you have faith enough to keep going back. Sometimes we give up. I'm done with, I'm done talking to God. It has happened a couple of times. I'm done with God, I don't want to pray. I don't care, I don't want to read the Bible. Don't tell me God and I'm done. But because of the Holy Spirit, Jedi, because I, I, I've told him, not only you I get to, if you fall my hand, you cannot fall my hand though. So when you build your faith to a particular point, you don't have any choice but to keep going back because you know he will answer. And you say, today, I'm drawing the line. Because there are some things that you will use to challenge God. When they say exercise your faith, be like you would go gym. You want yes. to build your muscles. Yes. It's not, Father, this happened, I'm angry. Father, this. no. It's like today, you will show me that sign. If you can do it for this, do it for that. The same God of yesterday. Not be you are the same, unless you are not the same God. Do it for me today. And sometimes when I challenge him, I tell do this for me and I'll do this for you. Make we see who go, who go fail you. Challenge. He could, God can't fail you. He can't. God cannot fail you. So when He says, "If not you, then who?" In my head, I'm like, surely there must be somebody else who can take this. But is it really fair to say that? Who are, whose name do I want to give God? God, no. Inflict it on this person. The person deserves it, not me. Really? Why? How am I better than that person? But then, when I'm reminded that all of this is to make me understand certain things so I can impact the lives of other people. It now made me realize that this life I'm living is not about me. It's never about us. It's about what we can do for his children. Feed my people, feed my sheep. That's what he kept saying. What is your life? What is your life doing? What are you doing? What's the meaning of your life? When I say, life is meaningless. Everything is a pot of beans. This life no balance. Mm -mm. Now, because we are thinking that it's about us. I'm here, I want to make money, I want to blow, I want to do this, I want to do that. No, you are not the owner of that life. So if God gave you that life to do something on earth, the question is, what am I here for? Some people get it easy. Some people find it very difficult. But either way, God made us different. He gave us the capacity to handle different things. And I've realized that no matter what has happened to me, it hasn't killed me yet. It hasn't broken me to the point that I will not rise up in the morning. So I say to myself, if my life is to impact other people and to give them strength to know you can do this, no matter what it is, you will rise, you will get up, you will do what you have to do. Why? Because I've been there. If that's the only thing I'm here to do, I'm going to do it. Like, if, if you really follow Stella on social media, you will really have this as a strange <laughs> thing happening because when you follow her live sessions, this is exactly how you experience Stella. 
<laughs> I'm honored. You guys don't understand. My ink crush is crushing me. <laughs> <laughs> Who would know that she's this deep? <laughs> so I thank her for the opportunity of having my show as a platform where you can express like this because a lot of people who love you out there don't really see this side. Yeah. And I'm happy they can be exposed to this level of information and have the opportunity to have a better like that. Look, God, if you had it this serious with Stella that I look up to, yeah. then I know that you are trying to just help me be a better person. Yeah. Because when I see such, it encourages me. Yeah. I I'd like to say thank you for at least opening up because all these kind of things are like private moments between you and God and even your life, but yeah. you're still able to open up. If we go back to the movie career that has really established you as a known actress, multiple award winning, are there, I don't know if you're ready for this. I am ready for anything, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go there. <laughs> Is someone going to pay me, but my ink crush has been conquered <laughs> by God. How, how do you take it when you have to be in a scene mm. with a man? Ah, that's easy. This movie I'm doing right now, uh, if you see the things that we did. <laughs> but the thing is, as a professional, because there are mem crew members around you, it's, it's mind conditioning. You condition yourself. If you're trained, you condition yourself to understand that this is a job. I'm not here to lolox. I love what you said, train. There was a time you trained people. Yeah, I still do. You, you have an academy or yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, an actor's playhouse. I still do. I train people in acting. And you have to condition your mind. It's, it's, a, it's a job. It's training. It's what you're paid to do. So you cannot afford to start developing feelings. So that's not a place for it. <laughs> that makes you so unprofessional. Uh, no, you must have you must have gone through a lot to get to that point where you can distinctively decide. Yeah, uh, you have to, because at the end of the day, that you cannot. The moment you start having feelings, and it, and, and I've seen it happen a lot of times. The moment you start having personal feelings for your co-actor, that day that job will begin to spoil, because what the chemistry that people should see has nothing to do with personal feelings. If you mix personal feelings with your scenes, well, it's not easy. It show, no. And when it show, that's bad. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. Ah, it's not easy. It's training. Because I, I would yeah. like to you. I'm a Christian, no. No mind, Jedi. I'm a Christian, <laughs> but you see, that part is sweet, though. No, but see, when we started in the industry, we were not as vulgar as we are now. Yeah. We had what we call TV kissing, and you were trained to do TV kissing. Our mouth, no, they ever touch. And the camera angle is what will deceive everybody. Yeah, so there's always like here, a cheek to cheek. Exactly. But the camera, yeah. But then I used to say, there is a way you can play romance that even before you kiss, is the audience that will be so, yeah, kiss Sam now. But when you see that, at the end of the day, when people watch this, they want to see authenticity. Trust me, people don't understand this concept of personal feelings get in the way. Because the way you would work with your co-actor, if you have personal feelings, is a different thing because the eyes never lie. People can see right through it. And then your actions will just become very static because you're trying to cover yeah. the fact that you have personal feelings yeah. for this person. As opposed to, I was paid to do a job and after my job is done, we go home. And there is it. no emotion in business. There is no emotion in business. No, you are you paid. Yep. Mm -hmm. Bye, get out. That's it. <laughs> next. Go to the next. Because in one movie, you can be asked to kiss three different people or make out with three different people. How many you won't catch feeling for? But when I look at people like Bros RMD, Jim Ike, yeah. and Ramsey, just these three alone, yeah. they can't kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and as I mentioned the three of them, I'm going to be interviewing you very soon. Yeah, Amen to that. Because, ah, do ah, ah, especially Jim Ike. Ah. <laughs> It's not, I mean, if you're really aspiring to be an actor, especially in the movie industry or in any area, mm -hmm. because you, you could act in a commercial, yeah. but not like a movie. Yeah. So, but if you're looking in the movie angle, you just have to be prepared for the tough skin. Yeah. It, <clears throat> emotions is not in business. So yep. They paid you. Oh, I love you. Bye. That's it. Let it end there. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Are there are there scripts that you are like, what the hell is this? Yep. And unfortunately, those are seventy percent of the scripts you receive. <laughs> Out of 100%, 70 are the ones that you're like, nah, not me, what is this? I have people that read the script and they're like, before I get to read it, I have Rume, Rume goes to it and she's going to be, SD, I wish you luck. Uh oh, <laughs> that's reading. the sign. <laughs> when I start reading it, I'm like, no, nope. tell them I'm busy, tell them I'm out of town, tell them I can't do it, no. A lot of those come, yeah. Do you, do you see the Nollywood industry in a new level? At the moment, because we see a lot of movies who really that come out on Netflix, mm -hmm. a lot of great works from people like Kule Afolayo, yeah. Kemi Adetiba. Yeah. Um, how would you say the industry is now? Is this? I mean, as compared to the very first home video I saw, Flesh and Blood. Yeah. <laughs> and living in bondage. You should talk to Ameze. The producer and actress that did twins. Yes. She's in America. She's my friend. I'll get her to talk to you. Bam! We are yeah. going to do the. Yeah. We are going to do it. Yeah. How would you rate the Nollywood industry at the moment? And are we really getting to that point where we can be demanded for by the international scene? Oh, for sure. Definitely, we're growing. I mean, in every industry, there are good ones and there are okay ones and there are horrible ones, but our good ones are really good and they're growing. The reason I say that is because. One of our movies from Nigeria was actually in the top, I think top 15 in, at the Oscars, The Milkmaid. Yes, Milkmaid movie, you should see that movie. It's so amazing, it's powerful. I saw Wait, it. Who I made Milkmaid? Them. It's, what's his name? Desmond something, Oviagele. It's not wow. a very, you know, popular Nollywood, Nollywood, but he made that film and he used unknown actors. I had the opportunity of hosting them live via Zoom, and when I saw that movie, my mind was blown. The Milk? Milkmaid. Okay. So they so came what, out what platform is he on? Top 15, I'm gonna find out. Okay. But they were finalists for the Oscars. They were being considered for the Oscars, but they didn't, you know, make it to the- The consideration is good for me. Exactly, that's, that's why I say we are getting to the point where Netflix is now commissioning films to Nigerians to make films for them as Netflix originals. We are being considered for the Oscars. Before you know it, and then we have a prominent Nigerian in, in the CBS uh, series, Boba Nabishola. Oh, and they're yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're I'm interviewing to, you soon. Yes. <laughs> so I think we're beginning to grow. People are beginning to recognize and appreciate what we have put in without any formal education in this thing. From the beginning, with all the marketers, with the Ogundes, with people who just brought things together and said, let's try this. With people from NTA, let's try this and make film. Yes. It wasn't easy, but even without the government, without formal training, we were able to rise to the point where now we're doing more and the world is watching. Yeah, is, no, so, the world is really watching yeah. because I remember seeing one of the episodes of uh, Equalizer yes. with Queen Latifah and, and she played a role yeah. as a Nigerian yeah. businesswoman. Yeah. She spoke pidgin. She spoke pidgin. I, I even recorded it on my story. She spoke yeah. pidgin English. Everything they do now, American films and all of that, they are adding Africa, Niger, you know, they're always wearing their Ankara and representing and, you know, there's this vibe that's going on now and, and now is the time for us to, to get in there and keep pushing. Now is the time. Just, just so you guys know, you may, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people don't, but Stella is in that zone of playing directorial roles Ooh. for some movies. Amen. I'm sorry I had to throw it out there. <laughs> she didn't know I was gonna say it. She didn't know I was gonna say it, but I had to throw it out there. <laughs> She has entered the level of being a producer yeah. and a director. She <laughs> trains people, you know, having an academy. So are there projects that we're really looking out for to say, like written, produced, and directed by Stella the Masses? Coming soon. They're all coming soon. I'm, I'm very... Oh, they are, oh, they are plenty. <laughs> I didn't know there are plenty. They have to, you know, I like to conquer all forms of media, all platforms. So movies, short films, stage productions as well, series, they're all in the works. We're putting it together just to make sure that we have everything right. And um, I've, been, I've been holding back because I wanted to learn a couple of things. I'm not one to just jump. Oh, I've been acting since, so I must know how to direct. No, I had to step back and understand a few things and learn a few things. So uh, a now, hint. That, now that we're ready. 
Stella is working on my movie. Oh. She, she's, she's coming on board as a consulting director. Yeah. Do you understand? I created the new role as consulting director. I love that title. Do you understand? <laughs> We've spoken about it already. Yes. So we are too real here. We yeah. throw it out the way it is. Mm -hmm. So you all look out for it. Yes. I'll say it again. My movie. Yes. Me. Yes. Moi. We're there. Oh. <laughs> My movie. <laughs> don't don't mess with it. <laughs> Time is not a friend of ours. Yeah. That's very painful. <laughs> I really wish you could spend more time, more time, I more know, time. I know. <laughs> but before we go, if you were to say maybe in a sentence or two, something you've learnt over the years mm. as a summary that you know if you say it. It's something that people can hold on to. Aspiring actors and actresses can work with, and it can be a form of a lesson that you want to teach them. Mm. What would that be? It will be find yourself in everything that you do, in every character that you play. Don't try to be anybody else. Don't try to be like Stella. Don't try to be like Genevieve or Motola, no. Find yourself in every character that's given to you. Might sound very complicated, but it's not. I would pick a, car, a role and see what would Stella do? What would she, how would she react to this? This is how Stella would react. Okay, this is not it. Then I do the opposite. But I'm doing the opposite because I understand that I cannot do it this way. Because people go in there, actors go in there, and they try to play themselves, because that's what they're used to. So you have to find what you're not used to and just relax in it. It's an opportunity to just play. I will add to it, find yourself is more of discover you mm -hmm. before you try and act like you don't know you. In the sense that yeah. you might just think that, oh, I can't do it. Mm. No, it's simply because you haven't discovered, discovered. you. Yep. Now, when you discover you, you can now move to the next level, mm. especially in the movies, where you can interpret the you to know how... <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't, oh! I mean, that's all. Oh Look, let me tell you something. Oh, God. Ah! Don't mess with me. Oh, there's an anointing. Yes, yes. yes ah! Yes. Touch me. Touch me. Right there. Ah! There's an anointing. Take it. This is how we go crazy, man. <laughs> Receive it. Real life, this is how we go crazy. Even yep. though this is the show, but this is how we go crazy. Yes, Stella yes, and yes. I. And I want to say thank you, sis. Anytime. Bro. Thank you. I know I really held you out. This is late. But the love is amazing. Oh, for thank sure. you for, sure. thank for you. taking out that time. I know I waited, but I was ready to wait. <laughs> thank and you, you still came out in your energy to be a part of this. Thank you very much. We, we all love you. A lot of people do love you. <laughs> and just please have it at the back of your mind. I am standing by you. Oh, I know. I will always I know. do my best the way God will help me to be a friend, to be a brother. Don't worry about the crushing. The crushing is gone. <laughs> I, I mean, if it was those days, yes, I can fight. But now I can't fight again. It's the too friendship. Old, it's too old to yes, fight. the friendship I've taken over the crushing. <laughs> and that's how we roll every time yeah. on the show, man. Thank you all very much for being a part of it. You know we'll always bring the best to you the best way we can. It's fun. It's entertaining. It's exciting. It's impactful. It's inspiring. It's educated. It's still your boy, Oluwatosi Jedi Ayo. And I'd just like to say thank you for hanging out with me on today's episode of In Your Vicinity with Jedi. So I'm looking forward to seeing you next time, okay? Have a good one. Stay. Good night. God bless. Wow, wow. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Stella. I appreciate you, sis. I appreciate you so much. Wow. She squeezed out time from the set. She was shooting. She loves me. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned a lot from it. You see, that's the beauty of the show. We go see them, talk to them, and get good information that can be an inspiration to you, that can educate you, encourage you and challenge you to be who you want to be okay now i'm sorry we have to go even though yes i was in dallas stella wasn't the only one i saw i had other guests that i spoke to but you know what i can't show you everything on this episode so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to tell you to simply do this 
click on the notification button, subscribe to my channel, and also help me share it. That's it. First of all, search the channel. The details are on your screen. Click on the notification button and share. And then you will know on the next episode who I will be talking to. Until then, I remain yours, Luatosin Jenny Ayer. Have a good one.